Have you ever been moved by music? Brought to tears or reminded of a sweet memory of your past? Even if listening to music makes you feel a little bit happier, music is an art that speaks to us in a sense that feels a whole lot more mystical and powerful than you'd imagine that some sound waves put together could. In this video, I'm going to talk about the effects of non-diegetic music in video games, how it creates immersiveness, and how it enhances the player's experience more than any other part of the game. So why does music speak to us so profoundly? As Robert Zatori, a professor and PhD of neuroscience at the University of McGill says, humans have an in its musicality. He continues, saying that one possibility behind humans' love of music is that humans love patterns, and music is almost always composed of patterns. If you've ever listened to a new genre of music and didn't like it at first, it's likely that your brain didn't like it because it had a hard time recognizing the patterns in the music. After a couple of listens, then your brain might start to see the patterns and you will enjoy the music more. The evolutionary explanation behind humans loving of patterns is based on the neurotransmitter called dopamine, which gives us a feeling of pleasure. Dopamine is secreted in our brains for things that are necessary for survival, like sex or eating food. And although music is not necessary for survival, music releases dopamine in our brain because of the patterns involved in music. Our brains have not yet evolved from thousands of years ago, and if our ancestors heard a rustle in the leaves from afar, for example, their brains would emit dopamine because a rustle was a pattern, meaning an animal approaching, possibly being a matter of life and death. This, like music, is a pattern, because our brains are wired to know that a rustle meant danger, and danger meant dopamine. On the most basic neurochemical level, our brains cannot differentiate between a pattern of something necessary for survival like this, and music. This is not to say that music makes us scared for our lives, although it could. A more specific explanation of the secretion of dopamine is that it comes when we feel like we are doing something right, and makes us feel good about it. A study titled Dynamic Interactions Between Musical, Cardiovascular, and Cerebral Rhythms in Humans shows that higher paced music creates arousal, and when we hear fast paced song, our heartbeat and breathing patterns will accelerate to match the beat. This further proves that music is something that affects us on a very deep level, and not just us. Have you ever wondered what music tailored specifically for cats would sound like? Well listen to this. This song was composed in a study made specifically to make a song that cats will love. The song is in a higher pitch than human music and features cat vocalizations like purring and circling pulses which makes cats feel calmer while listening to it. This further proves that music is something powerful and intrinsic to every being. Music in video games is no less powerful. Non-diegetic music is music that the player can hear but is not present in the actual game world, meaning the character in the game cannot hear it. Diegetic music is common in games as well, and it has its own strengths, but non-diegetic music is the leading provider of immersion in video games. To decipher how it is important, first we need to define the term immersion in video games. A simple answer to define this would be the feeling of being truly involved in the game world, in an almost trance-like state. A player might know they are immersed in a video game if they forget about real life, at least to an extent higher than normal, and feels truly lost in the game. Music helps to create immersion by doing a couple things. Firstly, it sets the atmosphere and tone of the game for the player. Whether music is creating a sense of chaos, like in the case of Doom, whose soundtrack consists of heavy death metal which almost perfectly fits the gameplay, consisting of walking around literal hell, gorily killing scary looking aliens with weapons of mass destruction, with no running away at all, or like in Minecraft, where music creates a sense of peaceful adventure while exploring, but changes in caves or at nighttime, or when surrounded by enemies, or at a low health, to a more intense composition. Music in video games works to create a tone best when it matches the event taking place. Take the soundtrack from Elden Ring that plays when the player is fighting the final boss of the game. Aptly titled The Final Battle, this epic song perfectly summarizes the feeling of reaching this point of the game, which you could only reach by slaying the strongest warriors and monsters around the world, non-stop. The soundtrack lets the player know that they are fighting a god. Also, it encapsulates the feeling of being a lone warrior fighting a literal cosmic beast who is the embodiment of the Elden Ring itself, the Elden Ring being an abstract term that basically means the order of the world. This song is totally chilling, and fits a boss fight of you, the player, who started out as a being with no weapons or skills, fighting a being that could loosely be defined as the world itself. 
Music also helps create empathy for video game characters. A study from the University of Chicago written by Bertolt Heckner titled Film Music Influences How Viewers Relate to Movie Characters explains that film music can influence character likability and the certainty of knowing the character's thoughts which are antecedents to empathetic concern and empathetic accuracy. This study, although it is talking about film and not video games, goes to show us that composers can give us a glimpse of what is going on inside the character's head with music, thus creating empathy or relatability to the character, strengthening the ties from player to character creating more immersiveness. One of my favorite examples of this is in Life is Strange, where whenever Max, the protagonist who has powers to rewind time, has to make an important decision, the screen starts shaking and there is an intense music playing, with fast bass hits, almost resembling a quickened heartbeat, which makes the player realize how dire this choice could potentially be for Max's and the world itself's fate. The effect of the soundtrack is especially pertinent when you compare this choice music to the old one that the developers scrapped. This latter music sounded more like a game show to me than anything else, and it lacked anything that made me feel like sweating when I was making a choice that could lead to another main character dying, for example. For me, the first choice music was one that really showed me how much power the protagonist Max had in the story and in the world itself, and this specifically made me feel more connected to Max by seeing how important and stressful her making these choices were for her, and making me feel more immersed because I know that my choice will have dire consequences on the game world. So, seeing how music can enhance a game, let's look at a situation where music dehances a game. Here's a video clip of one of gaming's worst soundtracks, Resident Evil 1's Mansion Basement theme, which was so bad that it became a meme. This is what happens when a video game soundtrack is done badly. You probably wouldn't want to play this game if I had a soundtrack like this, right? This is because bad music in video games literally decreases immersion, making players not want to play it. An investigation into the effect of music on immersion in video games by Rowan Evans at Durham University discovered this in an experiment testing the effect of music on video gamers. He found that music can have a negative effect on immersion if it is not liked by the players. Game directors can't just throw on some trumpets and call it a soundtrack. It has to be good in various ways. Doom is known for having an incredible soundtrack, and the process behind it is even more incredible. Mick Gordon began working on the game's soundtrack in 2014, and the game released in 2016. He states that the types of sounds and techniques that he used required lots of trial and error as well. The way Gordon directed the soundtrack was amazing, as he describes in various videos, but anyone who has played the game would know this without having to hear him say it. After all, the soundtrack of Doom is as well known and great as the game itself. In conclusion, music is a powerful art and tool that has the ability to make us feel emotions at the drop of hearing a single note. We are biologically tuned to liking music, and the use of non-diegetic music in video games has been shown to greatly enhance the player experience and immersiveness of the game world. By carefully crafting a musical score that is perfectly suited to the game's tone and atmosphere, game developers can create an emotional connection between the player and the game, drawing them deeper into the experience.